Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to return to my very popular series on great questions in web handling. In this clip, we cover a most vital web machine design question. That is, what is the best roller surface and how do you know that you have it? I know your time is precious, so let's get started. This is a great question, as are all clips in this series. What makes a great question, you ask? First, rollers are the most common element and are the building blocks of our web machinery. Second, rollers affect the economics of web machine design, purchase, and operation, so getting the answer right matters. Third, it is not so easy to give a short, simple answer but I will try my best here. Let's get started. Economics governs most aspects of web handling, including mechanical and control design. The cheapest roller surface is called as-machined. This Primary machining may result in odd machining marks and surface roughnesses of perhaps 125 micro inches from lathe tooling. Secondary machining operations, such as grinding or even polishing, can reduce roughness, but only at a cost. Increasing roughness, such as knurling, also increases the cost above as machine condition. Embossing and rotogravure surfaces cost even more. Adding a new layer, such as chrome to make an ultra-smooth surface, or tungsten carbide to make a rougher, durable roller surface, also cost more. Rubber covers cost extra during the initial purchase and cost extra during ongoing cost because rubber is not very durable. As you can see, there are quite a few issues that might go into roller surface selection. Since most of these issues are very product or process specific, we won't cover most of them here. What we will focus on here are the most common web handling requirements of traction and air handling, such as might require grooving. Most rollers, whether driven or undriven, are intended to be in traction. Otherwise, we risk loss of tension control, loss of path control, and scratching of the web. The band brake law is used to design rollers to ensure that traction is never lost, whether on driven or undriven rollers. To make sure traction is never lost requires a sufficient combination of wrap and web to roller friction. This design requirement is well documented in Module 3 of my award winning Web 101 class as well as in several pages in both my Mechanics of Rollers book and in the must-have 750-page Web Handling Handbook. We even have a free and easy internet app, the Air Lubrication Calculator by Abbott App, to do these calculations for you. For certain applications, Air entrainment becomes a very important consideration. These applications are when the case is simultaneously not slow, not narrow, and when the web is not porous and not rough. For that combination of situations, air entrainment means an increasing loss of web to roll attraction as speed is increased. The range of concern begins at, say, 100 feet per minute or 30 meters per minute. However, by the time you reach 10 times those speeds, traction is 
negligible for cases when the web is not narrow and not rough. To counter air entrainment, you must have sufficient air handling, such as provided by rough roller surfaces. The most common rough roller surface is grooving. For decades, we have known how to calculate the hair's thickness of air between a web and a smooth roller and used that to provide an equivalent area to park the air. This heuristic is detailed in my Mechanics of Rollers book and in the Web Handling Handbook and in the Air Lubrication Calculator by Abbott App. Let us describe just one more possible roller surface requirement, that is release to counter adhesion. There are many ways to do this, as covered in my Web 101 class and in the Web Handling Handbook. There are many roller shell surfaces that might be useful in different situations. Also, you might find the occasional need for rubber covers. Selecting the best surface for any specific situation is important, which is why machine designers and machine buyers should both go to school. These details matter. It matters because roller surfaces cost money when making or buying a machine. It matters ever after due to ongoing maintenance. So how do you know if the machine builder got it right? One clue is that all idle rollers should be the same, including width, diameter, style, and as detailed here, have the same roller surface. If not, they surely don't know what they're doing. However, just because all idler rollers are the same does not mean that the builder got it right. It is possible that all the idler rollers are wrong, or at least not optimized. I have seen thousands of idler rollers that had insufficient air handling and hundreds of idlers that had unnecessary tungsten carbide coating and hundreds of rollers made of carbon fiber for motives that weren't clear. Thank you so very much for allowing me to share my thoughts on great questions in web handling. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found something interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. See you next time.